Scouting cams are tremendous tools for the hunter and the habitat manager. You know, they, they, they frankly, they give us a set of eyes out there in the woods and the field 24 seven. The thing of it is, is cams are supposed to help us not hurt us. Frankly, the biggest sin I think there is in cam use is when they hurt us. I demand four things out of cams. First, they have to consistently detect the prey. If they're not consistently detecting what I'm trying to get pictures of, they're not doing me any good. They're giving me faulty data to base decisions on. Next, they have to have a trigger speed of a second or less. If it's a slower trigger speed than that, unless it's on a bait pile or a pond, you're gonna miss a heck of a lot of pictures. After that, it's camera noise. We can debate flash all we want. Does white flash hurt? Doesn't it? Does black flash hurt? Does red flash hurt? All that good stuff. You know what? None of that holds a candle to camera noise. When you have a noisy camera, those deer are going to freak out. Lastly is flash. I want a black flash camera. You know, I do not believe that flashes spook deer as much as we've been led to believe that some people say. I mean, I've used cams. I've used virtually every cam on the market and I've used them for many, many years. Cam flash, some deer tolerate it, some deer don't. When it comes to camera noise though, no deer tolerates it. That's so much more important, so much more damaging. The next key is to use them in a low impact manner. What do we mean by low impact? Everybody throws that term around. What low impact means is that the deer cannot see you, cannot smell you, cannot hear you. When you are in route to that cam location, at that cam location, and departing that cam location. You know, they simply cannot know that camera's there. Otherwise, we are educating those deer. Next, we need to cut the camera odors. That begins with storage. You don't just go ahead and throw the cams in a box and leave them in your closet. You do that, they're gonna pick up odors. Now, you're taking that camera and you're putting it out into the woods. Okay. Store it in low odor areas. Treat yourself, spray yourself down. Go ahead and treat your hands, especially in your beat, in your in your boots. You know, you want to make it so you are leaving as few telltale signs of our intrusion into the deer woods as you possibly can. Then time your intrusions for midday. Do midday hours because that's when the deer are back in their beds more often than not. You don't want to do it first thing in the morning when they're out in the fields or later in the afternoon when they're out in the fields and you go driving through them, spook them, send them all over. You know, always remember when you're using cams, your impact must be kept to a minimum. That is a key to getting them to work for you, not against. Now, here's a couple tricks. You know, on those cams that do have flashes or that are noisy, Use them to your advantage. You've spent good money on them, don't just throw them away. Instead, oh, take that gap in the field that you happen to have a stand on. Now, you've got your stand on one side, but you can't shoot the entire gap. So take that visible flash camera and set it on the, other si the opposite side of that gap. That visible flash is not going to be enough to make it so that those bucks are not using that food source anymore. If they want to be there, they're going to be there. But they will avoid that camera. The, the ones that will avoid that camera, they are now pushed closer over onto your side of the field. Making it an easier bow shot. Bringing those bucks within bow range. Okay, Then go ahead and take, take a scrape tree, plant that out 20 yards in front of your stand as well. This entire hunting game is stacking odds in your favor. 
putting the flash cam on one side of the field stacks the odds of pushing them to the other side a little bit. Sure, some of the mature bucks, they're going to walk right by it, not going to care, but a percentage of them are, and they are going to go more over to your side. Then go ahead and put a scrape tree out front of your stand 20 yards out in front of it. Just go ahead and cut a tree, dig a three foot hole, put it, the tree down in the dirt, pack it in good, make it so there's a licking branch right there at nose level. Now you're encouraging them even more. It makes a great one-two punch for getting deer to within range. But the point is, is that the cameras need to work for you. Cut your odors. Place cams in low impact locations. I like to put them on every low impact food source I can. I'll either put them in pinches within those food sources or on scrape trees or active, those active licking branches during the summer. Use cameras that are reliable, that do not smell, that do not spook deer, and you cater your activities to not spooking deer by cutting your odors, by timing your trips for midday when the deer are bedded, and give it every two weeks between camera swaps. You, know, you do that and you're not going out to the same location over and over and over and over again, educating deer to your presence. Grown Big is brought to you by Wildlife Research Center, the gold standard. Reconics, see what you've been missing. Antler King, bigger bucks, healthier deer. Heater body suit, you stay warm or your money back. Food plots for deer, planning your habitat improvements and improving your hunting. Ferminator, the best food plot implement on earth. Remington, America's oldest gun maker. Nomad, I hunt, therefore I am. Cams are great tools, but like every other tool out there, their success lies in how you use them. You use those cams to your advantage, they're going to pay off. But if you're sloppy about them, they're going to hurt you. Okay. Follow these tips in the show, and you're going to do great with your cams. They're going to work for you instead of against you.